Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto, ToolsandTime.com. Welcome back, guys. Today we have a 99 Chevy Suburban with a 5.7. Now this one came in with a list of symptoms that he's been having. But I'm going to start you off with the two main ones at the top of the list and how I process and the logic behind the way I try to troubleshoot it right off the bat and how I go about trying to explain things to the customer. Okay, so his first complaint was that he started noticing poor fuel mileage. And his second complaint, which was really his main complaint, was the vehicle had no heat. Even though he let his vehicle warm up out in the driveway for 15 minutes before he left to work, now it's been around 40 degrees yesterday morning, and I put it to the test and I noticed the same thing as well. I would let it warm up, and when I took it for a ride, even though I drove like 15 minutes, the needle would stay, it starts off at about 100, and it would only come a little bit off its seat, so maybe 120 max. And that's even after driving for about a half hour. Okay, so if we back up to when he was first explaining the symptoms, I already came to the conclusion that those two symptoms were directly related. His poor fuel economy was due to an engine that wasn't warming up to operating temperature. Now a lot of people don't understand the difference between open and closed loop, so let me try to explain. Okay, let's cover some basics. What is open loop and what is closed loop? In order for me to even start explaining my initial thought process behind how I came to the conclusion that the poor fuel mileage was mostly directly related to the cold engine, you got to have a basic understanding of open loop and closed loop conditions. In this slideshow, I'm going to cover some real basics. However, if you would like, in later videos, we could go into more depth. Open loop. When the engine is cold and the engine speed is greater than 400 RPMs, the PCM power control modular operates in open loop mode. In open loop, the PCM calculates air fuel ratio based upon coolant temperature and MAP, manifold absolute pressure, or MAF, mass airflow sensor readings, but mostly from a pre programmed table in the MemCal and ignores the O2 sensor readings, the oxygen sensor readings. In other words, it's just focused on a pre-programmed table and it's running off of that pre-programmed data. It's not looking at a broader range and making adjustments. The engine will remain in open loop mode until the oxygen sensor reaches operating temperature and the coolant temperature reaches a preset temperature and a specific period of time has elapsed after the engine has started. So in other words, while the engine's cold, I believe on this GM it's right around 130 degrees, or if the oxygen sensor hasn't reached operating temperature to cycle properly, which I believe is around 600 degrees Fahrenheit, it will not enter closed loop. Closed loop conditions. The oxygen sensor reaches operating temperature. Coolant temperature reaches a preset temperature. A specific period of time has passed since the engine was started. Then the PCM will operate in closed loop mode. At this point, the PCM controls air fuel ratio based upon the oxygen sensor signals in addition to other input parameters to maintain as close to a 14 to 7 to 1 air fuel ratio as possible. If the O2 sensor cools off due to excessive idling, or a fault occurs, or during wide open throttle, the vehicle will re-enter open loop and go back to the pre-programmed data, a known condition where the engine will run. On most engines, the O2 sensor is equipped with an internal heating element. This type of sensor is known as a heated oxygen sensor. The heating element enables the system to reach and maintain closed loop mode sooner, even during periods of extended idle. Okay, so when we're in closed loop, it's looking at a more broader range. It's seeing the feedback from the O2 sensors and trying to maintain that 14 to 7 to 1 ratio, which I believe is right around 0.45 volts, 0.45. 
that's where the flip-flopping comes into play when you're watching the live data feedback. The PCM is trying to maintain that 4.5 volts through the oxygen essential read, and so it's throwing it rich, pulling it lean, throwing it rich, pulling it lean, and it continues that trend and tries to keep it as close to 14 to 7 to 1 air fuel ratio. This also has a lot to do with catalyst efficiency, but we could cover that more in later videos. So I hope that gives you a basic understanding of closed loop and open loop conditions. So in open loop, the computer is simply running off of pre-programmed data. It's just ignoring the O2 sensors just like they don't even exist. Now you may ask, well, why don't the vehicle just stay running in that condition? Well, you got to remember there's a lot of variables. You got humidity, you got air temperature, you got climate. All these things play a part in your air fuel ratio to maintain that 14 to 7 to 1 ratio. So once it goes into closed loop, your fuel economy will be much better because your O2 sensor is monitoring your exhaust gases and can tell the computer, hey, I'm rich, I'm lean, and the computer can make precise adjustments to the injector pulse width. And there's a lot of other feedbacks that it come into play as well, but mainly the O2 sensors. Okay, now we're viewing some live time data. Up here in the upper left, you can see I got the intake air temperature. Right alongside it, I got the coolant temperature. Now when the engine's cold, these two readings should be read about the same. However, this vehicle has been running now for over a half hour in an attempt to get it to warm up. And if you remember correctly, when we look back to the open and closed loop for the ECM operation, this will not enter closed loop until it reaches a set temperature. And this vehicle, even though it's inside, is having a hard time even reaching 120. Just to show you the status of the fuel system, it's an open loop. Right now, the O2 sensor really isn't controlling it. It's going off of some pre-programmed data that's stored in the ECM. Let's do some troubleshooting and get this thing in the closed loop and um, revisit this. Okay, so now that hopefully I helped you gain some basic knowledge on how the engine control management works, let's try to troubleshoot this vehicle and see why it's not coming up to operating temperature and going in to closed loop.